What is going on everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about five dividend paying companies that I personally like in the year of 2019. So four of these five companies are actually considered dividend aristocrat companies, meaning that they've been increasing their dividend consecutively for the past 25 plus years. And this is something that a lot of investors like to see when putting their money into an income producing asset into an income producing stock and the other stock we're going to be talking about is a company that has the potential to increase their dividend a crap ton over the next coming years due to them having a low payout ratio a lot of cash on the balance sheet and they quite frankly make a crap ton of money so without further ado guys let's talk about five dividend paying companies that i like in the year of 2019 so the first stock we're going to be talking about today is at&t ticker symbol T. And out of the five companies we're talking about today, I only own three of the companies and this is one of those three. And I actually bought more shares of AT&T uh, yesterday. I'll post a screenshot right here. I believe I bought like 10, 11 shares, just added an extra $400, um, you know, into my position. So the sector of AT&T is communication services and their dividend yield is $2.04, 6 6.6% percent per year. So let's say, for example, at a stock price of $30, you have 100 shares of AT&T, $3,000 position, you'll be getting around $200 in dividends per year. And if you guys want to calculate this on a quarterly basis, simply divide this number by four and this number by four, and that is what you'll be getting on a quarterly basis. So I'm sure a lot of you guys already know by now AT&T successfully merged with Time Warner back in June of 2018. This is actually one of the biggest mergers that we've seen in a while. And since then, guys, the government is actually trying to appeal this merger. There's litigation right now. They're in a legal battle. But everything is looking in favor of AT&T um, you know, continuing with this merger, making it 100% official, guys. So this is actually one of the things I was waiting for before, um, you know, putting more money into AT&T. And it's not 100% official yet, guys. There's still litigation, but we've seen an article back in December, I believe, saying that it's not looking too good for um, the people going against AT&T. So it's looking good for AT&T to, you know, officially complete the merger with Time Warner. And once this litigation settles, guys, you know, that's going to be huge for AT&T. So what I like to look at in terms of dividends, guys, very simple. I like to see a stable business, right? I like to see a stable business that's growing year over year very slowly, right? Because we're not going to be seeing growth companies paying steady dividends, right? These companies we're going to be talking about, they're mostly companies that have been here for a very long time that grow very slowly. So I like to see revenue growth, which is what we see here, guys, from 2014 to 2017. We've seen some very nice growth in terms of AT&T. And I also like to see you know, a lower payout ratio, meaning that they're paying less of their earnings in the form of dividends. And there's always room to increase their dividend based off of their payout ratio, right? And if I'm showing you guys their payout ratio, I believe it's right here of around 38%. So this means they're paying 38% of their earnings in the form of dividends. So there's always room to increase this dividend and push it even higher from the 6% that it's at right now. So this is the first dividend paying company, guys, AT&T, ticker symbol T. I personally love this company and plan on adding more and more into this position every single month, no matter what the market is looking like, just to have an income producing asset paying me every single quarter, and then I'll be able to reinvest that money, get more and more dividends over time, and just grow my wealth that way in a very conservative way over time, right? So the second company we're going to be talking about today is Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol JNJ. &J. This is another one of the three companies that I own on this list. And the sector for this company is healthcare. They pay a dividend yield of around $3.60 per year. 
2.8%. Obviously, if you guys want to calculate the quarterly rate, divide this by four and divide this by four. So some of the, uh, you know, some of the uh, brands that they own are Johnson's Baby Lotion, the Johnson's Baby Line. We all know that, you know, Listerine, Benadryl, right, Aveeno, Band-Aid, right, Neutrogena. So it's always nice to see a company have a widespread variety of brands, right? This puts, you know, not all of their eggs in one basket, if that makes sense, right? They spread all of their, um, you know, money across different brands. They don't have only the Johnson's Baby brand. They have Aveeno. They have Benadryl, they have Listerine, they've really just spread their eggs across many different brands, which makes it a nice, um, you know, steady paying company in terms of their revenues, right? Their revenues are looking solid. We'll take a look at that. You know, just like AT&T guys, this is a slow growing company over the past 50 years that really just gives you a steady dividend, right? And we've seen some news about you know, a lot of negative news around J&J &J recently, which I'm sure a lot of you guys already know. And this is something that you can do your research on and look deeper into. Don't want to get too deep into this um, in this video, but just judging off of their um, financials, like I said, guys, very slow growing company. In 2014, take a look at their revenue. And in 2017, take a look at their revenue. Just a slight, slight increase, but it's increasing over time, which is what we want to see. So very solid in terms of their revenue, guys. Don't expect these companies to grow revenue 10, 15% year over year. That's not going to happen. It's most likely going to be like a 2, 3, 4% increase. And that's something that we like to see in terms of, uh, you know, dividend paying companies. And in terms of their payout ratio, it's 63%. So it's a bit higher in terms of um, uh, AT&T. But with a 63% payout ratio, there's still some room to increase that. So what this means is that they're paying 63% of their earnings in the form of uh, dividends. And we typically like to see a lower payout ratio when investing in dividend paying companies, but 63% is not too bad. So that's the second one I'm watching uh, and I'm personally invested in in the year of 2019 with the third one being Procter & Gamble, ticker symbol, PG. So the sector of Procter & Gamble is consumer defensive, and this is some of the products that we can see in terms of Procter & Gamble, right? We see Crest, we see Bounty, Pampers, Tide, you know, we see Gillette, and this is another company that has a widespread variety of brands, right? They're not all in one basket. They're not all right here, right? They're spread wide, right? There's, you know, detergent, there's shaving material, you know, there's teeth, we see NyQuil, you can clean your dishes with Dawn, right, Bounty. There's a bunch of different areas where they're getting their money from, which is something that we like to see. Because let's say, you know, Tide, let's say Tide went out of, uh, you know, their brand just sucked. They went out of business or Charmin, right, or, you know, Gillette. They can still rely on revenue from Crest, from Bounty, from Pampers. These are all brands that are ingrained in the consumer's minds that, you know, they're going to be here for a while, right? And their dividend yield is $2.87, 3.04% per year. And if we're just taking a look at Procter & Gamble here on Yahoo Finance, you know, we can see what their uh, financials are looking like, and I'm sure they're very similar to the other ones, right? We can see in 2015, 70, right? 2016, 65, 17, 65, 66 the next year, right? So this actually has decreased since 2015, which is not too good of a sign, but the fact that we've stabilized over the past three years in, ter in terms of total revenue is a pretty good sign. And this is actually the one of one of the stocks that I personally don't own yet, but do plan on adding money into this year into my dividend paying portfolio. So taking a look at their payout ratio, it's a bit higher than the last two, right? This one's at 69%, meaning that they're paying 69% of their earnings in the form of dividends. And just to let you guys know, the higher and higher the payout ratio gets, you know, the more likely it is that they're going to decrease 
their dividend, which is not too great of a sign in terms of, um, you know, dividend paying companies. But, you know, it's not that bad of a payout ratio. I've seen companies that have payout ratios of like 100%, 200%, 300%, which is obviously something that you don't want to be investing in as a dividend paying asset. So that's the third one, guys, Procter and Gamble. The fourth one is the one that has the potential to increase its dividend a crap ton. And this is Apple, guys, ticker symbol AAPL. The sector Apple's in is in technology with a dividend yield of $2.92, 1.19 or 1.91%, 1 excuse me, per year. So in terms of Apple, guys, Pay attention to this, guys, because, you know, Apple is a company that's increasing their revenues a lot year after year after year, and they also have the potential to increase their dividend due to them having a low payout ratio. So this is kind of like the best of both worlds, right? There's a little bit of growth in Apple, and there's also some value in it with the dividend yield, with the low payout ratio, with the amount of cash that they do have on the balance sheet, with the amount of net income that they make every single year. There's a lot of potential in Apple. So we can see here 233 back in 2015, 2018, 265 in terms of total revenue. So that's quite a nice increase over the past couple of years. And if we take a look to their statistics so we can see their payout ratio, it's around 22%, guys. 22% of their earnings are being paid out in the form of dividends, meaning that this can increase to 50, 60, 70% over the next couple of years, pushing that dividend to maybe like a 4 or 5% dividend yield. 3, 4, 5% dividend yield is not too out of hand in terms of Apple, in my personal opinion. So the last one we're going to be talking about today is McDonald's, ticker symbol MCD. And this is another one that I personally don't own, but plan on adding more money or uh, adding a position, you know, into, right? So McDonald's, ticker symbol MCD, sector, consumer cyclical, dividend yield, $4.64, 2.49% yield per year. And this is another company that actually tends to do well during a recession, right? So during the last recession, McDonald's actually didn't do too bad at all. I believe it actually might have went up in price. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head now, but I know for a fact that it didn't do as bad as some of the other stocks. So in terms of their financials, guys, we can see, you know, very stable, right? 27, 25, 24, 22. Well, not too stable in terms of revenue. We do see a slight decrease here, but you know, they have the most, you know, fast food locations in the world, guys. This is a global, global brand, global company. It's diversified across many different countries. So the fact that the revenue is dropping like that doesn't scare me too much because of the diversification, you know, of the brand. But if we take a look, at their statistics to see their dividend payout ratio, it's around 61%. So right at a at a solid range, right in the range of J&J &J and Procter & Gamble, they're paying 61% of their earnings in the form of dividends. So guys, those are the five dividend paying companies that I like in the year of 2019. I personally own AT&T, Johnson & Johnson, and Apple. Plan on adding money into McDonald's and Procter & Gamble soon. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about these five picks. Do you own any of these? I would love to love to know. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button. Let's get this video to 50 likes if you did enjoy the video. I'll catch you guys later.